Hey there, and welcome to my top 10 base building survival games featuring indie titles set to release in roughly the next 6 to 12 months. These games offer diverse worlds and new adventures as you craft, build, and battle your way through post-apocalyptic futures, subterranean Martian caverns, otherworldly extra-dimensional realms, and beyond. Okay. There's certainly something for everyone. And real quick, if you're enjoying the video and you have an extra second, it would help me tremendously if you left it a like. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, without further ado, Let's begin. All right, let's see it. Oh, I moved this down. So first up, there's this game called Under a Rock, and it's probably in my top three on this list. I don't like games where you're zoomed in this much. Hopefully the game actually isn't like this. It's an open world survival crafting game that supports one to 10 plus players and is being developed for Windows, Linux, PS5, and Xbox Series X. And so you play as a 19th century explorer who crash lands in this mysterious world that's been forgotten by history. Okay. And you've got to figure out what happened to this previous expedition. You got to lift a curse and then find your way back home. And all the while you'll be exploring, crafting, building, and more. Every player gets their own unique, procedurally generated 64 square kilometer world with caves, underwater areas to check out and you can share these worlds with others and travel between them and all the while keep your stats and your gear and you'll be competing with this advanced ai for territory the world looks really nice but like i just i don't know if it would be that interesting it just seems okay and resources and you'll have to build bases yeah, let's and see what defenses. the caves are like and the game has two seamless build That's modes nice. so there's like default mode for hands-on construction you just put the materials in okay and you build whatever you want and then there's cool. this advanced quote ghost building which is for planning out your base layout and then finishing it later when you have the resources that's interesting so if you're tired like of that. rebuilding your base after every raid you can just activate the auto saved blueprint and everything will show up as a ghost element ready for you to just add back the resources that to place is fucking massive Rebuild. Yeah, the forest so does that. Yeah, they ghost do. Blueprint feature, you with can like having the set up pre-made campsites, outposts, or even big bases almost anywhere. And you can build on the ground, in the trees, in the caves, mm -hmm. even underwater. They're not really restricting where you can build at all. But you'll have to watch out for wildlife and locals, like a neighboring Neanderthal clan might raid your base just because they don't like your smell. I mean, the enemies look interesting and cool. Right? I mean, seeing a survival game where there's, like, big enemies like this, I always find that to be kind of exciting and fun. This is cool. Or a pack of dodos could attack you for to play no as a reason girl. at all. Under a Rock is built on Unreal Engine 5, and so it takes full advantage of Nanite and Lumen technologies for a super immersive and detailed open world experience with amazing view mm -hmm. distances. The character creation system is oh, super you robust, okay, letting you cool. fully customize your character. Oh, and you can even tame and ride some creatures. The game's been in That's development cool. since October 2021, and they're planning to release into early access, but they don't have a date set just yet. I wonder, like, what the real, like, because Valheim, for example, one of the reasons why Valheim works is that they have, like, benchmark things that your character has to do, like beating different bosses, etc., and, like, that kind of guides your progression and, like, directs where your character goes. So I think that making it to where you have that in a survival game is, like, almost necessary for me to make it feel compelling. From the darkness. Enshrouded. Awaken. This next game was literally just revealed a couple of days ago. In fact, I had to cram it into this list, making this a top 11 list just because okay. I could not leave it out. It might look a little rough around the edges, but keep in mind that it was literally just revealed. And so it's quite early sure. in development, but there are already many people comparing this game to Valheim and saying that this is Valheim meets Breath of the Wild. And so it's called Enshrouded and it's set in the lost realm of Embervale. Basically your ancestors went crazy for some magical power and ended up causing this devastating pestilence called the shroud and the game is all about survival crafting and action rpg combat and it's set in this massive combat looks, voxel based con combat looks okay this is fine i mean it's looks rudimentary okay Continent. And voxel based basically means. Oh, like, that's really cool. Let's look at that in again. This massive voxel based continent. And voxel based basically wow. means like similar to Minecraft. And so you get to explore mountains, deserts, and you'll uncover this hidden story. The you'll environmental things forests, are cool. Caves and dungeons, searching for its badass. secret knowledge and treasure, and building up the strength to face the horrors of the shroud. And so you have to fight your way through all sorts of enemies uh -huh. like fiends of the forests, 
Buka of the Mountains and Fell Creatures in the Mist. The game has a really cool looking skill tree system and you can really develop your own unique playstyle with fighting skills and spells. And more importantly, you'll get to build amazing structures using voxel based building techniques, customizing them with different materials. All things considered, I actually kind of like this better than the first one. I, like this, like at the beginning, this game I thought was kind of stupid, but after seeing more of it, this actually looks pretty good. ...and furniture, and by providing safe haven for NPCs, they will help you out by unlocking advanced workshops okay. and the ability to craft epic weapons and armor. You'll be able to master using a shield, sword, staff, sure. and or bow to take on the shroud, and you'll be able to team up with friends in up to 16 player co-op gameplay. 16 people in a, in a server? That's actually pretty fucking cool. I like that a lot. You will raid, gather treasure, wow. and fight bell hordes together. The game takes you through Embervale's biomes, immersing you in fallen cultures and ancient myths like the- I don't know why so many of these games struggle at having like really, really large size servers. Like it's probably a tech limitation, but like to me, I just wish, I think Valheim would be so much more fun if you could have a server with a thousand people on it. Mystical Kindle Wastes Desert in the Dark Revel Wood, and the story will unfold as you play, revealing a tale of mm -hmm. magic, ruin, hope, and redemption. Enshrouded is built on the custom so made like holistic engine made by the developers just for this game, and it's set oh, wow. to release into early access in 2023 with a full release in 2024. At first, it'll be a PC exclusive, but the developers do plan to bring it to consoles soon after. Okay, so it's going to be PC exclusive. That's actually really good to hear. Awesome. Blind Descent. This next one is set in the year 2071 and it's called Blind Descent. And you're on a mission to find a pioneer team that went missing while exploring a newly opened mine on Mars. Okay. You and some team members go down this 10 mile deep Martian cave, but the elevator crashes, leaving only a few survivors. With no communication to the surface and no clue about the lost pioneer team, you start exploring the tunnel and stumble upon a subterranean world beneath Mars filled with alien life, dense jungles, and bizarre weather. You can play this game solo or with up to four friends in co-op mode, and you'll venture through the vast Martian underground world to uncover its secrets by exploring massive and challenging environments. The game offers full freedom of exploration. You can harvest- Movement just looks like it sucks. Yeah, like, I don't like the movement. It, it doesn't look super good, man. Resources, craft tools, and climb anywhere you want. We'll see where it Roll goes. Roll across underground seas in a boat and even build structures to overcome obstacles. Okay, that's You'll cool. also construct a shelter or house to call home, complete with furniture, crafting tools, and more. But make sure your house is strong enough to withstand harsh weather and strange creatures. Uh -huh. And so as you progress through the story, you'll improve your crafting skills, weapons, and more. And your goal is to find an energy source that will help you power your printer, presumably a 3D printer, and a signal booster, which will help you establish connection with the surface to let them know that you're alive. Uh -huh. Blind Descent is still very early in development, but they did have a limited demo event back in March of 2023. They are planning on launching an early access version, but the time frame hasn't been announced just yet. That one seemed okay. I mean, like, I would say that one's not, like, it's probably as interesting to me as the first one. Yeah, it's about the same. I've been keeping my eye on this next one for a long time. Imagine this, you and your friends crash land on Earth in a space shuttle and you have to start all over. You'll explore and build a base to defend against mutated animals and humans while uncovering the origin of the defense mechanism that unleashed radiation waves, forcing a few privileged humans to live on space stations. So it's kind of sounding a lot like the 2013 film Elysium, Elysium yeah. so far. The game is called Derelicts, and it's inspired by games like The Forest. The map features an interconnected subterranean cave system with massive bosses and unique challenges that you need to beat in order to move the story forward. This is kind of cool. I like this one. Yeah, I, I, th I think this, yeah, this is good. You'll gather resources, chop trees, and okay. mine metals to build a secure base to protect yourself from mutated wildlife. You'll generate electricity using wind turbines, water wheels, and even solar panels. But watch out for weather changes that can impact your power production. You That's cool. Yeah, I always like that. I, I think that really, 
to me, usually these like post-apocalyptic ones are interesting, but the ones that I like the most are the fantasy medieval ones. You can also automate your base with wooden gutters, water pumps, and pipes to transport logs to sawmills for plank production. As you explore the world, you'll find new recipes for tools and building parts to help you progress. Mm -hmm. Get ready for thunderstorms, blizzards, and even tornadoes that can affect your daily life and damage your base. Plus, Makes you'll sense. find a canine companion to join you on this survival challenge you and to help you out in battles. Derelicts is made by a solo developer, and it's been a real treat watching all of the updates on Twitter along the way. And That's crazy that one dude made all of this. Oh my god. Every time I hear about one guy that makes a whole game, I think back to how it'll take a year for Blizzard to change something in WoW. It's like, yeah. Yeah, right. It's set to be released into early access in 2024, and I can't wait to see what this game has in store for us. The Lord Forge's the fire the has oh, long yeah. gone cold. As a true Lord of the Rings nerd, I'm really excited for this next one, which promises to be the first and only survival game set in that universe. The Lord of the Rings Return to Moria is an epic adventure survival game where you get to control a group of- Yeah, yeah, I saw this before. It didn't look super promising, so I'm kind of curious to see if there's any new information about it. Dwarves on this mission to reclaim their legendary home beneath the Misty Mountains, and it's set in Middle-earth's fourth age. Mm -hmm. Gimli Lockbearer himself brings the dwarves together as they explore this procedurally generated map, meaning every adventure is totally unique. You can play by yourself or with a team of up to eight friends online. And the game is packed with features like managing resources, hunting, gathering, sleep, temperature and noise management, even dynamic lighting. And you'll face some seriously intense combat against loads of orcs and other unspeakable evils, all while uncovering the mountain's dark secrets. You can channel your inner architect to build epic structures from the ground up, restoring Kaza Doom to its former greatness and reclaim- So there's a good chance that you'll be able to fight a Balrog in this. Miss Dwarven landmarks bring minds back to life. Yeah, Deep Rock, Middle Earth. That's what it seems like to me. And reignite forges I mean, to access Deep Rock hidden Galactic resources. And the crafting system looks great. You can loot and craft legendary Dwarven gear, upgrade technologies, and unlock mind-blowing machines. This is after And you'll even ranks? find ancient well, yeah, magical items age. like glowing swords. We've all seen those before. Maps of mithril veins, forgotten crafting books, and super powerful amulets. Mm -hmm. And you'll mine all sorts of resources, from the basics like iron, gold, and quartz, to legendary ones like mithril. And you'll use crafting stations and forges to refine ores, improve gear, and strengthen, repair, and enchant items. You'll be able to create your own dwarves with a custom character creator and personalize them wait so it's like dwarf fortress what the fuck even more with craftable armor and weapons to become a part of dwarven legend <laughs> just a heads up it is a pc exclusive and will be available right. only on the epic game store unlike everything else on this list which is available on steam so keep an eye out for its release in spring of 2023 which is kind of like right now so hopefully very soon yeah, I remember seeing the trailer for that game, and it didn't, like, super excite me. Boo, epic? I, I don't mind that. Who cares? It's just another, it's just another launcher, whatever. Uh, I know people might celebrate whenever Steam gets something, but, like, I don't think it's really good for anybody whenever one platform has all of the games on it. That's called a monopoly. Those are bad. And I love Steam. I think Steam's great. I think it's way better than the Epic Store. Your attention, please. This is a state emergency announcement. The Rotor Laboratory, on behalf of the government, assures that I just don't think Epic that bad. I don't know. It's not big building. Next up, we have a post-apocalyptic survival game called okay. Rooted. It's set around the year 2100 after global bacteriological warfare caused civilization to collapse. As one of the few survivors, you've got to adapt and make your way through the ruins. Some I think this this game is called The Day After The Day After areas have been reclaimed by nature and are relatively safe but urban areas are still super dangerous or day so you'll have the day to before explore, oh. either solo or with friends to well, how does that even make sense yeah it's t well who There's cares scraps, restore items and learn how to craft new objects to improve your camp and living conditions but you've got to stay on your toes because danger can come from anywhere looks like a house as you side progress man. in the game you'll build oh shit and you get an american flag in this one bro we're gonna get this one for sure Ooh, we gonna get this one.
improve your camp using items that you farm, salvage, and craft, and you'll even be able to improve your defenses, automate tasks, and supply electricity to your expanding workshop. You can set up an outpost in either a village or take up the riskier city areas by securing houses, offices, or even entire floors in a building using barricades, partitions, and traps. Crafting tools is essential for making life easier, helping with transportation and protecting yourself. Salvaging is super important in Brooded, as you recover, repair, and use items from the collapsed civilization. By salvaging, you'll learn how to reassemble objects this seems slow. and upgrade your camp. But don't forget, you're not alone. You'll come across friendly and dangerous animals as well as other humans that are just trying to survive. Be careful when picking fights as some opponents might be tougher than they look. Sure. Rooted has a living world that evolves with your actions, unlocking new areas, items, and crafting options over time. Major events will shake things up and present new challenges for you and your friends. Okay. So you'll need to be prepared to adapt and survive. After a successful Kickstarter campaign, the game is heading into alpha testing soon, and they're expecting to enter early access before the end of 2024. And I can't wait to check it out. Ah, it looks okay to me. It's not really super. It's just like, it's kind of, eh. Eh. Forever Skies. You might have heard about this next one because there's been quite a lot of buzz about it for the past few months, and it's called Forever Skies. Okay. It's a first-person action survival game set on an Earth that's been devastated by a global ecological disaster. Right. The whole planet is covered in this massive layer of toxic dust. And in the game, you get to build and customize a high-tech airship that's your home, workshop, laboratory, and more. Okay, You'll so it's like raft, but the raft is in the air fly above the Earth's surface, navigating uh -huh. toward the ruins of civilization and mysterious it's anomalies. Called air raft. While you're at it, you'll have to manage your airship's hull and integrity, gather resources, and improve it to make it truly unique. You'll use your scientific knowledge idea. to build and operate various machines, analyze scanned items, and reverse engineer lost technology. Uh -huh. You will also research new ways to get food and resources, develop new tools, and therefore boost your survival chances. The game has you exploring and extracting resources from these high-up ruins built to escape the dust below. You'll be surrounded by drifting debris caused by some mysterious anomaly, and you'll harvest them to break them down into raw materials to help you survive. Plus, okay. you'll investigate what's left of civilization, uncovering the reasons behind Earth's transformation and revealing secrets from our past. When you descend below the dust, you'll discover a bizarre new world that's changed in our absence. You'll face off against evolved flora and fauna and hunt for a viral pathogen to cure a mysterious illness that's threatening your family. There oh, was a demo COVID. released during Steam's Next Fest in 2022, and people really seem to enjoy it. The game is made on Unreal Engine 4 and supports up to four player co op, and it's planned for a 12 month early access period starting in quarter two, 2023. It's coming to PC in the latest generation of consoles, and after enjoying the demo, I'm really looking forward to the full release. I don't know how to feel about this game. I really don't. Subnautica, the COVID alien edition? Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I'm very uh, unsure about this one. For you. Oh, yeah. I actually saw stuff about this game. This one I'm very excited for. The year is 1889. This one looks cool. The world as you know it teeters on the brink. The next game on my list has been rapidly climbing up the Steam's most wishlisted games chart, and it's probably the one that I'm most excited mm -hmm. about personally. It's called Nightingale. It's a PvE open world survival crafting game that you can play either solo or with friends. You'll build, craft, fight, and explore while journeying through the mystical portals into all sorts of amazing and fantastical realms. You'll I'll definitely say that the combat for this game doesn't look super It does not look super cool. Like, to me, combat is what matters more than anything else. Stranded in these gorgeous yet dangerous Fey realms because the arcane portal network has collapsed, and your mission is to become a skilled realm walker, navigating a web of transdimensional portals to get to Nightingale, mm -hmm. the magical city that's humanity's last stronghold. So get ready for an adventure through enchanting Fey wild forests, treacherous swamps, and gleaming deserts as you unlock portals leading deeper into Fey lands. Yeah, I think one of the coolest things about survival games and stuff like this is finding those like uncovered monsters and just like uncharted lands that have crazy enemies in them. That's what I always think is the coolest thing. 
So to me, that kind of that's a benchmark to me on whether a game is going to be interesting or not. Actual honest, real fishing. I have to cook we'll meals, see. build shelter, and muster up the courage to face many challenges. You'll craft tools to harvest resources like trees, ores, and plants, and find even rarer materials hidden in the realms. As you discover new schematics, you can assemble the equipment and weapons you'll need to survive, and you can even enchant your gear with magical properties using special ingredients and arcane technology. In this game, you'll design and build an amazing estate using different architectural styles and tile sets. You can upgrade and customize your structures to create communities that live safely off the land. Plus, you can recruit NPC workers to help you expand your homestead, automate This production, looks really cool. ...and gather resources. When it comes to combat, you'll craft and use a variety of melee weapons oh, and shit. firearms to take on the fearsome creatures lurking within the portal Just network, shot him in the including belly. the twisted fey versions of humans called the Bound. You can even team up with other players to battle gigantic apex creatures. The game focuses on collecting... That's very good to hear. That's the kind of stuff that really excites me whenever I hear it. That, like, there's going to be, like, these big monsters and shit like that you have to fight. Yeah, that's badass. ...realm cards, which will help you reshape the landscape of your next destination. Each realm has its own dangers, discoveries, and surprises, and you'll have the power to influence its design, like the number of hostiles, resource abundance, and the environment itself. Nightingale uses Unreal Engine 5... I'll maybe have an unpopular opinion. I actually don't like games that you can change like in game like mods can always do this i like games where there's like one set experience that everybody has like valheim for example i didn't like that with v rising ivan has already like gone Dark through Souls, several yeah. rounds of play testing it's set to enter early access in the first half of 2023 i have a dedicated video going over everything you need to know about nightingale and you can check that out and here. i know a lot of people don't that agree with that it's just how i feel thoroughly on this channel I feel like it's a uh, it's like a shared experience, and like whenever you say the like, hey, I beat this game, everybody knows what that means, right? Like with Dark Souls, everybody knows what I beat Dark Souls means. Whenever you say I beat, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers three, everybody knows what that means. Whenever you say like I beat uh, Witcher three, uh, you know, it's like well, that's not that's doesn't really, actually that's a bad example because it's it's a story game primarily, so the combat's like secondary. But like a game that has difficulty options, it just doesn't really mean as much. Hogwarts, yeah, exactly. But that's also kind of a story game, I don't know. Aloha, and welcome to Hawaii, a destination with endless beauty fuck? and nature. Let your troubles melt away in this tropical paradise. Relax your mind and soul on one of our breathtaking beaches, or stimulate your adventurous side with exciting activities found all over the yeah. island. So if you're into epic base builds, you're going to love this next one, which is set on Earth in the year 2122. So about 100 okay. years from now and about a century after, a teleportation system called the Veil has crashed. Your character is a clone restored from backup system data, and you're stuck in this persistent survival MMO apocalyptic nightmare called Fractured Veil. What you can choose to survive fuck? alone or team up with friends as you gather, build, quest, craft, raid, and defend against the island's scariest mutants, monsters, and horrors, as well as other players. The game has some cool features like a detailed building system similar to Rust, if you ask me, a tiered skill-based crafting mm -hmm. system, balanced PvE and PvE quests, dungeons ranging from small to Diablo-inspired spaces, and RPG-style player progression with talents, abilities, and skills. Inspired spaces and RPG- This seems like a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't know. Style player progression with talents, abilities, and skills. And there's also a procedurally generated building road. A any time that I see a game like that has a lot of systems like that, unless it's an MMO, I, I usually like I, I like my single player games to be kind of simple. And to have like a difficulty in like precision combat, stuff like that. River system for the map. It's Speaking an MMO. of map, I don't Fractured think this Bale is has an MMO. a huge 64 square kilometer open world based on real world topographical data from Maui. A dynamic weather system and day night cycle makes the environment unpredictable and exciting to explore. It doesn't look but like watch an MMO. out for mutants, monsters, and players lurking everywhere. And remember to burn the bodies. 
You'll need to harvest resources to craft essential survival items like shelter, food, equipment, and weapons. Mm -hmm. And AI drones will be patrolling the map and live streaming gameplay to Twitch 24-7, focusing on PvPVE action and offering a unique view of the game in standard, night vision, spotlight, and thermal modes. And you can tune that's in- That's really kind of interesting. I wonder what that, that's, that's a very interesting idea. I like that. That's, that, wow, okay to the drone stream to watch the action unfold in real time anytime fractured veil is built on unreal engine 5 exclusively for pc and early access is planned for quarter 4 2023 uh-huh a couple of months ago i couldn't even imagine that uh, I that one looked okay yeah i mean like i don't know if i'd really get that excited about it but all right end up here and all this would happen to me all right, moving on now to Outbreak Island, a game where some really weird events have happened on an island, causing most of the people there to either vanish or go through some crazy mutations. And you are sent in alone to see what's going on. But once you're there, you realize that there's no way out, and so you have to stick around and survive. At night, radioactive energy powers the island's electrical grid so that you can use the infrastructure there to oh, wow. build shelters and produce resources in factories and sawmills, for example. But that's not all. Nighttime is also when you can explore the multi-level underground labs that will be filled with monsters and sweet loot. Bro, who fucking fights a mob like that and then just runs away? Sees a so mob, yeah, what the hell? you craft and upgrade weapons, equipment, and your skills to be ready for battle. And you'll have to fortify your base to survive weekly surges, which is when monster hordes attack. So kind of like Seven Days to Die, uh -huh. where you have to fortify your base and survive these weekly onslaughts. And so you'll have to master skills like farming, gathering, and hunting to make the most of the limited mm -hmm. food resources plus you can combine ingredients with culinary recipes to make special food that will keep you alive in the long run outbreak island has a completely open 20 square kilometer world with tons of diverse locations and landscapes just fuel up your vehicle grab some supplies and set out on an adventure across the island's uncharted terrain the game will be made on unreal engine 5 and it looks like it's on track for a 2023 release uh, so i mean this looks okay i mean like I, I i don't know like whenever i see the actual gameplay of this it doesn't seem like super exciting I'm going to be honest, it really doesn't. Like, whenever I actually, like, the, the environment and everything about it looks really cool, but, like, they're not really showing a lot of actual gameplay. Get ready for an intense survival horror experience. All right, last one on this list. Technically number 11 on my top 10 okay, list. Let's see Go figure. You get one bonus one. This one's called Grand Emprise Time Travel Survival. Kind of okay. a mouthful. But this one takes you on a journey through different eras of time. So you start in the pre-life era, and then you travel through the dinosaur era, through primitive times to the colonial era, through ancient wars, and then finally landing into the industrial revolution. And I've seen on Twitter that there might be a space age after that. And so as you move along from one era to another, you'll develop new technologies. So you'll go from like riding dinosaurs and forging primitive tools to then building colonies and sieging castles to then experiencing the excitement and automation and mobilization when you reach the industrial revolution with- Ill That sounds really interesting. Interesting, but like that that seems like there's so yeah age yeah empire earth or some shit right age of empires yeah like it just seems like the scope is so big electric machines base building is a huge uh, part uh, of the game too and you'll start with simple houses that then evolve into creating tribal like colonies this looks really and eventually cool. you'll develop an industrial electrical but zone. like what if you take like a dinosaur and you want to uh you know fucking attack the the fucking castle with a dinosaur like what happens combat is pretty important as well you'll be battling dinosaurs using rocks and primitive spears uh -huh. and then you'll move on to sharp swords and finally into firearms and you'll also spend a lot of time exploring and gathering resources which are essential for your survival and advancing through the eras so you'll need to collect Looks unique nice. resources to develop new technologies and some cool things that you can do include sieging castles flying in hot air balloons automating your fuck? world with machines and electricity and even building and sailing industrial ships and air aircraft to rule the skies the game is expected to release on pc sometime dude this seems like the the scope of this is insane man like i don't even know it looks cool though yeah it does look cool but like how do you oh my god yeah trying to i feel like it's trying to do too much as well in 2023 and it is made by a solo developer 
So if you're eager to dive into these worlds and test your survival and building skills, uh -huh. keep an eye out for release dates and announcements from the developers. I'll also be following the progress of these games closely, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel for updates, gameplay, reviews, news, tips, and more. And thank you very much for joining me for my top 10 survival base building games of 2023 and 24, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Seems good to me. I think this is a pretty good hey everyone, comparison. I just want to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, but most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here. I'm I hope this you episode guys has video. earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the Can next one. Can we do one. top 10 MMOs? Well. Yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I think that which games really excited me the most. It's hard for me really to say, but uh, I, I would say that overall, I kind of liked... I think this to one, Minecraft. this Enshrouded so you... game, this one seemed like the best game. Like, even though the other ones had better graphics, this Enshrouded game seemed like the one that it was interesting. There was a lot of, like, uh, the movement was good. The combat looked good. In general, if a game has a trailer and the entire trailer is cinematics and just, like, looking at, at distances and there's no real combat, it makes me pretty nervous because I just assume that there's a reason why they're not showing the combat. The Lord of the Rings one? Yeah, I don't know what to think about the Lord of the Rings one. I actually don't have super high expectations for it. But, yeah, I think this is a good video. I've never watched their uh, their content before. Oh, it almost has 100,000 subscribers. Holy shit. Yeah, there you go.